from Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Screening and Vibrating Equipment Supplier, Ori Africa, hosted a media launch and factory tour to celebrate the commissioning of its newly installed gravity-poor polyurethane system, which allows the company to begin manufacturing its own polyurethane panels, liners and wedges. Nadine James tells us more. Orly Africa had originally imported its polyurethane panels from its sister company, Orly Taijin, in China. Although the cost of importing panels did not adversely affect the pricing of its products, the volatile rand dollar exchange rate had eroded Orly's profit margins. Further, the introduction of this new system forms part of the company's drive to become more self-sufficient. Orly Africa had already started producing its own witch wire and hopes to import an injection molding system from its sister company in the near future. Orly Africa CEO Mark Hajan elaborates on the reasoning behind the decision to invest in the new polyurethane system. What happened when we started with the producing wire is that we produced everything in China and we ended up holding a huge amount of dead stock. So we, we paid for a lot of material that we couldn't use immediately. And when we got the contract to supply poly wedge panels into Mozambique, we had two choices. We could either bring it in from China, which meant bringing in thousands of panels at a time, which again was a big capital cost to us, or capital outlay, or we could set up a facility here that we could make the panels ourselves, and it would also give us more flexibility. We could make to order uh, different sizes and for different clients, and that, that's the main reason, was to avoid spending a lot of money up front importing panels from China. From Even though it's our own sister company in China, it still makes more sense to make on demand in South Africa. Haushin points out that the investment in the polyurethane system won't be repaid timelessly, adding that, as a result, the company is well positioned for future expansion. It cost us about, uh, probably all told, about one and a half million rand to bring it in, which I think we should be able to pay back probably in about six months making locally and because it's capital equipment we've bought from our own company in China there's no onerous demands on repaying the capital so by the time we've paid off six months capital on the equipment we would probably be in a similar position if we were bringing in panels from China but after that we own the equipment and we can carry on making it all, all by ourselves here locally. The new system and drying room are modular, enabling the company to expand capacity when needed. All the Africa has hired and trained two new staff to operate the system. Production will be on a smaller scale to start with and the company will produce about 50 panels a day. However, it can easily adapt to increases in demand and, if necessary, automate the process for a faster turnaround time. Further, the company can produce a wide range of products with the new system. The big drive here, as I said, is to make poly wedge panels. That's a wedge wire with a polyurethane surround. We can also make poly wire panels, which is a woven wire panel with a polyurethane surround. We can make poly punch panels, which is a punch plate with a polyurethane surround. And we're also going to make various uh, screen spares like side liners, uh, center, center clip rails, center clip protection strips, uh, wedges. While the Africa is constantly growing its client base. Aushin says that because of the diminished activity and growth within the mining industry, larger mining companies are looking for alternatives to their regular suppliers in an effort to reduce costs. This has allowed relatively newer companies like All the Africa to enter the market. Ori is specifically looking to broaden its base originally and has looked to develop contacts and distributors throughout Africa. The main drive for setting up this facility was to produce poly wedge panels for Benga Mine in Mozambique. Uh, unfortunately, Benga Mine, as you may or may not be aware, has gone on to care and maintenance. So the, the big drive for us disappeared when the mine went into care and maintenance. But we do have another supply contract for smaller panels, um, not as many as we would have made for Benga but uh, it is something that will keep the facility ticking over until Benga starts up again. We are also supplying into Zambia, Zimbabwe, Ghana, and uh, we're having a look at uh, export opportunities into Madagascar as well for the big nickel mine. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.